All right, man, let's do a Regis uh, Devin Haney prediction video real quick. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Regis Progress is the WC champion of the world. Most people look at him as the number 140 pounder um, in the world. Uh, so, you know, T.O. has the lineal because he did beat Josh Taylor, but some people think Regis is the number one guy. His last fight is why some people are saying it's why Devin uh, took this fight. He fought a dude named... Uh, Danny Lido Zarilla. Okay. And I, I went back and looked a little bit at this fight. I ain't really do no film study because I don't be having a time like that no more. But I seen both these guys fight. Um, he was a guy, Puerto Rican guy, 30 years old, never been knocked out, but he, he had another loss to Arnold Barboza. Uh, pretty much a comfortable loss to Arnold Barboza, who outboxed him. But other than that, um, you know. He had like 13 knockouts, but I see obviously when he stepped up in competition, the knockout stopped coming. But um, I think he dropped Regis too. They didn't count the knockdown of Regis. He dropped Regis. That was a knockdown. You know, Regis got knocked down and they let it slide, slide, slide. You know what I'm saying? But Regis is 5'8, 67 and a half inch arms. And when you look at uh uh Denlito Zarella, he has 70 inch arms, and I think that caused a problem. And I'm going to pretty much get to what I've seen in that fight. Uh, go to Devin Haney, 5'8", uh, same height, one more inch in arm length. Uh, you know, I think uh, obviously 30 and 0, 15 KOs, his last knockout came in the retirement of Abdamadov in 2019. He was on a little knockout streak. He had that knockout versus Antonio Morale, Moraine. So, uh, so. He ain't a knockout puncher, but um, he sits right at 50% and that KO ratio. And, you know, uh, Regis sit at right at 82% KO ratio. So uh, he had an impressive fight versus, you know, Jose Zepeda, uh, you know, and he lost a, a decision to uh, Josh Taylor. I felt that he got spanked in that fight. That fight wasn't close. They tried to make it out to be that it was a close fight, but it really wasn't. And one thing I'm gonna get right into it that I seen with Regis Progress in that uh Zarella fight um was that he he didn't know how to cut the ring off. He followed Zarella around the ring. Um for whatever reason, he was lining his front foot up. He was lining his his front foot up with Zarella back, like outside of Zarella, uh to Zarella's left. Instead of stepping over to his left and cutting Zarilla off, he had a real he had real trouble cutting Zarilla off in that fight. I don't know if he respected his punching power. And another thing is Zarilla movement really kept him off balance. And when Zarilla jumped in with right hands, um, Regis wasn't ready for it. You know what I'm saying? That You know, Zarilla kept him off balance. Zarilla kept him moving. You know, Regis couldn't cut the ring off. Um, you know, he had trouble cutting the ring off. I mean, when you walk in the guy down and you're not throwing a fucking jab, a good jab, he trying to throw overhand lefts and overhand overhand lefts to, to clip him, but he just not coming in with a jab. He coming in with his hands down. Um, he winging punches. And that 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 that's why they took this fight. Not saying that Devin gonna win for sure, but Regis Progress can't handle perpetual movement. You remember what Devin Haney said that me and uh you know, me and you know uh Shakira Stevenson laughed about uh me and Shakir Stevenson laughed about how ass she was when he sparred you and all that stuff. They know that uh Regis can't handle movement. And as Zarilla and as and as Zarilla fight is pretty much what confirmed it in their mind. I mean he looked like a fish out of water. I'm gonna tell you another thing that concerned me about Regis going into this fight. I think he can win though. You know, he continued to he continued to follow Zarilla around the ring. And then when Zarilla clinched, he agreed with a lot of those clinches. You know what I'm saying? He agreed with a lot of those clinches. You know what I'm saying? He agreed with a lot of those clinches that was in there. You know, and I see that, you know, I see a game plan in which it can work for um, Devin Haney. You 
know what I'm saying? I see, I see, I see where it, it can it can work for Devin Haney, and I see why they kind of took this fight. He didn't he doesn't do a really, really good job of dealing with movement. And that's side to side, and that's in and out. You know, at least in his last fight. And how many other guys has he fought like this? You know, that's what you got to ask yourself. How many other guys has he fought? Has he fought with true perpetual movement? So pay is really a banger. Josh Taylor at that point when he left Shane McGuinnon, he was really a banger. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you got to ask yourself. How many true boxers have he fought? And you got to remember, he started off late in the sport of boxing. He started off mad late, so of course it's gonna be some some ingredients, some ingredients left out the out out the you know recipe. So we go back to him. Let's see. And we say, well, how many how many boxers have this has had this man really fought that can really box? And I don't see none. He really ain't really fought no boxers with no perpetual movement. And when he fought Zorilla, you know, that kind of that kind of got exposed a little bit. Now you're talking about Devin Haney. You know, one thing people point out with Devin Haney, he ain't got no punching power. So, you know, one thing you got to understand about that, when I don't have punching power, I got to accept that. I can't come in with ego to show I do got punching power. And when you don't got punching power, you got to be a better boxer. You got to be a better counter puncher. That's how you're going to manufacture knockouts. That's how you're going to manufacture respect. But he got good footwork, you know, a little a little bit more rangier. He's a little bit more rangier than Zarella by an inch, but his perpetual movement is a lot better. You know, he's going to be more offensive. He's going to be more offensive. Zinzarella. You know, let's re just hit, hit him with something that he don't like. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to be a little bit more offensive than Zarella. All right. But with him, you know, it's the punch, you know, understanding that I'm not, not the biggest puncher, understanding that I got to make up with value and counter punching, but he got speed. He can box, and he just got a tendency to kind of like to get when he get out of harm's way. He like to roll his head, I think, to his right. You know, he like to kind of dip to his right, and I think Regis got to know that. And if I was Regis, I throw that left hook to a side, and I anticipate that dip coming. You know, to the right, and then I drop that right hand where that head gonna be at. Pause. That's kind of would be my game plan. If I'm him, that kind of be my game plan. All right. But, uh, you know, some things that, you know, like I said, we, we just got to work on. That's that's fighting the perpetual movement. That's fighting perpetual movement, guys, that move. How can how can he offset that? You know, we just can sit there and jab more. Not that little bullshit flicker and jab he was, he was throwing versus the Rilla. He got to throw a real jab. And if he's not going to throw a real jab in this fight, he's going to lose. That jab is set the power up a lot better. Another thing I don't like is how he's talking about he want to show in this fight that he got skills. He want to show the world that he's a skillful fighter going into this fight. How fucking stupid do that sound? Fight your fight. Don't sit there and try to box with Devin Haney. Next thing you know, you box with Devin Haney, then you down a few rounds. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. Take take the fight to him, rough him up, cut the ring off on him, and knock his ass out. Don't sit. This ain't the time to sit here to show to do show and tell. Trust me, this ain't the time to sit there and do show and tell. It's not. That's what he got to understand. It's not the time to get cute. It's not the time to prove everybody you you could box and they was wrong. No, it's not the time for that. Go in there with the mindset, I'm going to do what I do best to win this game. That's the mindset that he got to go with. 
That's the mindset he got to go with. You know, for Devin Haney, obviously you don't have punching power. Obviously, you know, can you take the punch going to a new weight class? You know, these are all the questions that he has to answer. Now, for Devin Haney to win this fight, um, I think that he needs to, you know, use his jab. You got a guy that don't use a jab who throw a lot of uh, uh, lefts, lead lefts, and, you know, he throw a flickering jab. And I think the number one thing he need to do is throw a dominant, stiff jab. You know what I'm saying? And I think another thing that I did notice about Regis, especially in that Josh Taylor fight, and it's Josh Taylor and that's Devin Haney, okay? But another thing I did notice is that he don't like going backwards. So keep him off balance. He got a problem cutting the ring off side to side. Sometimes push him back. He will agree with the clinch. Don't forget, too, Bang that body. You know, I, I would tell him to bang that body. And people say, well, why would you tell him to bang that body? That's because you got a guy that's 34 years old who making a weight that he can't even make no more. The dude is trying to make a weight that he can't, he can't make no more. And that's a problem. He can't make that weight comfortably. Look at Regis Progress's midsection. It's soft. He doing dry fast and a dry fast. Like I think he said, I did one day. He did a dry fast for forty eight hours, or some crazy shit like that's. That mean you going without eating or drinking a dry fast. So he doing everything in his power. You know what I'm saying? He doing everything in his power to make the to make the weight. He doing everything in his power to make the weight. Come on, he's doing everything in his power to make the weight. So, yeah, I touch that body. I dominate with my lead hand. I, I move side to side, and then I will push full. I will push him back. I will push him backwards. And then clinch. He will agree with the clinch. If I'm Regis Progress, I press the action. I come out with a more dominant jab, a more dominant jab, you know, and, uh, you know, that's where I'm coming out with a more dominant jab. I bang Devin Haney body. I throw that left hook to the body. Then I drop that left hook upstairs where he dip his head to, you know, and that's, and that's how I'm coming. I'm coming to take his head off. I'm wearing them down to the body. I'm wearing them down with my physicality. I'm wearing that ass down. But ultimately, um, ultimately, Devin Haney picked this fight for a reason. I think I think it's really, I think it's really, you can see a reason why people would favor. Um, you can see a, a, a reason why people would favor. Uh, you can see why people would want to favor uh, Devin Haney. I mean, uh, uh, Regis Progress, big puncher, used to being at the weight, but he's been at the weight a little bit long. Devin new to the weight. I'm going to go ahead and take Devin by unanimous decision. But I can see Regis winning this fight. Devin could be making a mistake. Regis can punch. But I'm going to go ahead and take the boxer. I'm going to go ahead and say this was a calculated risk uh, by Devin Haney. They knew what they were signing up for. So, yeah, let me know what you girls and guys think, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Like Devin by unanimous decision, maybe 115, 113. Maybe he get dropped. We'll see. But hey, check out my fight prediction playlist. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Link tree, everything there. Uh, appreciate the love and support. Peace.